down. Put my touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it. Touch it. Touch it. Touch it. Touch it. We should slate it, don't you think? Yeah. Okay, is that the light? Where are you sitting? Down there? Why? Why are you I'm why is he down sorry. there? He can do what he wants. I don't do what he wants. Okay, so why are you so far from me? Come okay. All right, Get so closer. Okay. No, you come here. <laughs> That's it. That's more like it. Lovey-dovey sort of, you know. They say as you get older, your love grows stronger. So for some reason, it is getting a little stronger, you know. Right, Daddy? He's bashful. Yeah, I know. Well, I wanted to start, I wanted to, you, you were going to tell us about the sauce. You were going to show us how to do the sauce. Well, what should I say? Well, you can, you're going you're to get up and show it to us, but I wanted to know who, you know, how did you learn it? Well, what are you asking? About the sauce. Uh, how, who, who, how did you learn how to make sauce? Well, I'm supposed to be talking to you? You could talk to me, you could talk to them, it doesn't matter. I'll be over here. I'll be over here. Shall I mention your name? No. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you mentioned my name. Yeah. You want, what should I say? You want me to know, you want me to tell you how my, the how, how I learned how, how to make sauce? So how did you learn well, how to that, make sauce? Why don't you ask me the question? Don't you hear that then? No. <laughs> I mean, if you would ask me a question, I would answer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it now. Right? How, I want to know how you learned how to make sauce. Who taught you, who taught it to you, how long, how many years, how many years you've been doing it, and I want to see you do it. Well, you know, when you first get married, you're really not much of a cook. I watched my mother make sauce. I watched my mother-in-law. I got a lot from my mother-in-law, a lot from the family. She got more than my mother, mm -hmm. from my mother than my mother. See, there he goes putting his mother in again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go inside and let's see. So now, if you want me to uh, yeah, come on. show you, I'll come and show you how I make the sauce. There were two different cooks anyway, to begin with. How am I doing so far? Terrific. All right, now, to begin with... <laughs> Our mother had nine children. Nine children? Yeah. yeah. And how did that affect the cooking? Well, some kids didn't like uh, certain things, and she used to yeah. satisfy them in different ways. And so then... She became a better cook because of that? No, no. Well, my, my mother was a good cook, but the thing is that she... Uh, she couldn't cook with the way she wanted. See, beginning with her husband, my father-in-law, he, he used to cook for himself, so he's giving a better example right there. Eh? <laughs> You notice the, hand, the towel doesn't leave my hands because I keep wiping all the time. <laughs> but as far as cooking, it was a big job to cook for seven people. Eight, nine were my father. Yeah. My father used to work at, at nights a lot. And uh, she had to satisfy him in the daytime and uh, he used to go to sleep and okay. she used to cook for him and then cook for the children. That was a... I mean, separate And then I go here. This is what my mother-in-law taught me. Take a spo few spoonfuls of tornado, and throw them in here because your meatballs remain very soft. Not like some of the meatballs you eat sometimes. You're invited somewhere. Yeah. You eat a meatball and it's as hard as can be. You yeah. throw it at the wall, your wall will crack. <laughs> <laughs> I really shouldn't say that because I have a lot of friends and I'll be getting a lot of telephone calls. <laughs> as a kid, sure. I worked in a, after, after school. I used to deliver vests. The vest. I used to make vests. At the time, there was a big thing for vests. <laughs> I, mean, I used to deliver the vest. I used to tell my, my, my cousin, he used to be a boss, I used to work for him. I used to tell him, at the time the cafe was a nickel. I used to tell him, give me 35, 40 cents. Why? Where are you going to go with 35, 40? You want to give me 35, 40, 40, 40 cents? Go yourself. But I always kept that money in my pocket. I used to hitchhike on a horse <laughs> in the back of a horse and wagon. I used to go around. Well, on Saturdays, what did you do on Saturdays? On Saturdays, I used to go to the uh, Delancey Street. Uh, there used to be a time that the Jewish people don't uh, didn't light up uh, their own stoves, you know, and the gas. They wouldn't light no matches on Saturdays. On Saturday. Saturday. Saturday was a Sabbath day. I used to go there for a nickel. I used to light their gas. Well, my mother-in-law used to teach a lot of it. He used to teach us a lot of it, you know. Uh, my mother taught me one way, and my mother-in-law had a different slant to cooking. Well, she was a very good cook. Yeah, but why did you wind up cooking that way? Because, we said because to please him more. 
<laughs> Naturally, that's the truth. And you know, my How do you amuse home. yourself? Mostly, always eat, going to different restaurants, from one restaurant to another. Delicious. The time was cheap. Very good. We go from uh, an Austin Street for Kanishas and a cup of coffee, for dime. A dime. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my shimmel. So the original. I used to go there. What did they do with the original one? The original potato, uh, uh, potato knishes. Oh. They had the original potato knishes. Uh, they're, they're still there. There wasn't anything to do anyway. You had no, you had no radio. You had no television. And every now and then you used to get a paper. Guys to come out, extra, extra, extra. You buy the paper, there was nothing in the paper. <laughs> the guys used to, uh, used to go, wait, extra. There was nothing in the paper. Yeah, it's just the people used to come down, buy the paper, there was nothing in it. Then, 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 then we got, uh, then we got a, a little uh, at Water Kent. I never forget it. the first radio we had. Uh, the little at Water Kent. It was in the shape of a church. You know, it was in the shape of a church. And boy, with seven of us in the house, we used to fight the program. We used to put on. I get it from my sisters. They have a garden which they grow it in. They give me enough of it so I can make myself a nice jar to last me all year. And as you see. That's about the end of it. Okay. See? Leave the cover She's off. trying to put on. I don't know why. She should talk natural the way she did what? does now. When she puts on, uh, oh. telling you about the, the, the sauce so and all. She's, she's trying to why? Uh, put on. She should talk natural. She'd be better off. I don't know what you mean, Charlie. Talk the way you're talking to me now. That's what I mean. Well, she, she told me she wanted to know how I... Yeah, but the thing more. is, the thing is that you talk natural. Don't try to put on... I'm not, you, you're not an actress. I'm not putting on any airs. You wanna? You're well, looking talk, for a fight or something? Talk the way you huh? talk to me when you talk to for your son. You're looking for a fight or something, there. No. See, Marty, every time I sit close to him, he moves away. I don't know, I don't know why. It's either, it's either. I don't know. Maybe he's getting a little older now. You know. Changing the subject. Right. She's changing the subject now. What did you want me to say? That your mother taught me how to cook? No, 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 no. <laughs> and every time you come in the kitchen, we fight? No, no. Because you butt in my cooking? Huh? Sometimes a man, a man it's, it's been known that a man is a better cook than a woman anytime. Who said so? <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Who said so? It's been it's said in the well, book. Well, why aren't you doing the cooking then? I suppose so. Not my line. <laughs> my line. My line. My line, I always told you, when I come home from work... That's, that's right, just it. sit on that chair. As soon as he gets through with dinner, that's he comes it. in here, sits on that chair. You're really, really running it down, wearing it that's down. All right, that's what I bought it for. <laughs> and there's times we sit in here, and I says, Charlie, did are we mad at each other? Why don't we speak? He says, Well, what do you want me to tell you? She was I've been home all day. At least talk to me. What What can you tell a person after you with them for forty years? <laughs> And after uh, 39 years of being married, we decided to take our belated honeymoon, which we never got. So we decided to take a trip to Italy. Yeah, why did you ever get it? Because people spoke to you and, <laughs> and they told you about the train going fast and you were afraid to go oh. to... to, to <laughs> You were afraid to go to Niagara Falls, and that's it. I was ready to so go. So he never took me on my honeymoon. Well, anyway, well, anyway, we took a trip to Italy. We toured for two weeks. I'll show you some of the pictures okay. that we took. This was Milan. That's Milan? Yeah. First dinner we had, first night we went out. This was Venice. The food was delicious. This was um, uh, Rome. This was in Palermo. This is my aunt here. She's 80 years old. Here I am standing. We had, this is her niece, her granddaughter, right? And this, we had a few friends with us. This is also in Palermo. What is that? This is cows. They were in the street there, right in front of the house. And we took a picture of them. We thought it was very nice. And this was in um, Palermo. They called it Piazza de Vergogna. The Piazza of Shame. The Shameful Plaza. That's right. Why was it called Piazza of Shame? Well, because there was all these... Naked statues. Naked statues, and I thought they were just great. Oh, no. <laughs> you thought they were great. And uh, the, pa the statues were beautiful, and really, this was at the uh, Alinina... Uh, Where is that? Really, Peter Pisa. Don't tell me. 
Get a guess. Pisa, Pisa, Pisa. That's it. This no, was. Sir. <laughs> this was was a monk naturally it was dead a long time so we took a picture of it anything that we saw we what took a picture yeah, well, what, what did you think of that i mean you had the whole the, what is that that uh, well that we, we it was an impression the yeah, way his, the yeah, way his yeah. uh, teeth were and this was the gondolier but that beautiful in venice the land is so beautiful you could you go see it but there's no work over there there's the people uh, they have no work over there. There are no industries. That's why they came to America. There was, they got, they had better here than there. That's why you speak to these little children, eight, nine years old. Their first words out of their mouth is, the, "As soon as I become eighteen, I'm coming I'm to, going America. to America." That's Here's right. your answer. It's because so there is, yeah, in the little towns now. Little towns. In the big towns, it's like over here. One little boy, we like had a little here. waiter there that kept chasing me. He was sixteen years old. That was in Naples. He, he, in Naples, he kept chasing me. He says, "Please." Take me to America with you. I'll work. I'll do anything. But take me to America. He says to me, get away from him because he really means it. And I felt so sorry for him. I really would have put him on the boat, uh, on the plane with me. But uh, I felt so sorry for him because there's nothing over there. If you were on a plane with you, then you were responsible for him. <laughs> I would have taken him. What's the difference? Uh, maybe he did me. Maybe he was sincere about the whole thing. I don't know. But the way it sounded, he would, they, would, they would have taken anybody to come here. Well, I think they would have came with anybody. Uh, That's so. your, there's your answer. Uh, I lived across the street for 20, 20 years, and uh, naturally, when they fixed up these buildings, we wanted to better ourselves. New, new, well, new, new furniture and all. So my wife, said, let's move across the street. I was against it, but then, you know how it is. <laughs> you always give in. When we first uh, the Italian people came here, as I said before, first was uh, uh, all Irish. Then the Italian people. Then came the in. Italian people came in. And. There was a lot of Jewish business around here. There was a little five and ten cent store. There was a shoe store. All Jewish business around here. Mostly, mostly Jewish trade. Uh, you know. uh, a dry goods store. Mm -hmm. uh, stands with the like Orchard Street would be today. Yeah, there That's was just there was push cards, you know. Push cards. That's it just crowded as Orchard Street. Oh yeah. Oh no, it wasn't crowded as Orchard it, Street, but we it had was this. Crowded. We had well, not but naturally the neighborhood people would come down and to shop. I never forget. I never forget. Shopping, the you know. push cards in the morning were on this side because there was no sun. In the afternoon, when the sun came on this side, the push cart shifted over shift to the other, over side. the other side. There was no sun, but there was a great business over here. Oh, you couldn't get wonderful. a store over here. It was then. Beautiful. Stores were uh, there was no store. Every store on the block was every taken. store, every basement was every taken. Because you had the lemon dealers at the time. We used to get lemons from Europe, imported lemons from Europe. You don't get them today anymore. And uh, they used to have uh, lemon oranges, all kinds of fruit. They used to have uh, there was one, two, three, four different places of all, all that stuff around here. Import. <laughs> And I don't know what happened. And they, they, they faded away when uh, they got sort of a depression, like, you know? And people started to move out. They started to move, you know. Business started to close. But uh, as far as the neighborhood here in Delancey Street and Orchard Street was all together. Jewish and Italians, they all worked together. And as far as actually stealing, they all, kids all used to steal. Kids, petty, petty, you know, petty, petty stuff, you know. Just for fun sometimes. It takes something, gonna push car, make the guy chase him and the rest of the kids just to go and pick the stuff and, <laughs> and go, go away with it. What do you mean? They used to, uh, walk from hand to hand. While he was chasing, while he was chasing one guy, the other one just him. take a few pieces <laughs> and go away. And that's it. Uh, no way, it was the like man is chasing kid stuff, him. you know, all kid, kid stuff. stuff you know. That's all it was. But uh, kid stuff or no kid stuff, sometimes uh, it was that uh, you needed that stuff, you know. It was like, uh, it isn't like today. It's like uh, your mother and father couldn't afford to get you anything. You used to, mm -hmm. uh, kid used to grab something and uh, use it, you know, uh, fruit or vegetable, whatever it was, or a piece of uh, crockery or something like that. I remember my brother Charlie getting older. He got a job. He was 14 years old. And uh, as I said, we had to go out to work. And he got a job work working for... J.P. Morgan, I think it was, as a messenger boy, $14 a week, something like that. And of course, we started to, you know, little by little, one brother started to work, and the other brother started to work, and the sister, and we started to accumulate some money. And I remember one Christmas, my brother finally told my mother that they wanted a proper tree. And we were thrilled. So he, he bought the tree, and they put the, whatever it was, candles. I think they used to use candles at the time. We didn't have no electricity. And uh, we put up a tree. But... Uh, there was no such thing before that. I mean, we never had a tree. We only had uh, uh, Christmas trees. Yeah, 
Christmas time, like for instance, one day, one night, they wanted to play a joke on the kids. The kids hung up their stockings. They were kids. They hung up their stockings. We had a, a, a real fireplace, but it was never used. So they hung up their socks on the fireplace you know, thinking they'd find something from Santa Claus the next day. And just to play joke on them, we were a little older, we stuffed them up with lemons and pieces of wood and, uh, and uh, lots of things we found. And I, then after we felt bad because it was really terrible. When the kids woke up and they looked at those socks, honest, <laughs> they cried, honest. It was really terrible, we shouldn't have done that. Now when I think of it, I say, that was terrible what we did to them. But as I said, as we went along, you know, it was different. I never remember a Christmas tree in my mother's house. I don't remember. Right, never I did. never remember a Christmas tree in my mother's house. We had a Christmas tree. Why? Well, as I said, the, they didn't go for it, the it old wasn't. folks. They didn't go for it. They, what they believed in was that at 12 o'clock at night, they went to church. They celebrated Mass. And after that, they came home. We had some sausage and things like that in the, at the church. And the next day, we had a big dinner with the family. Our fathers and mothers, uh, they were from a different world, they were different. Uh, they brought us up, as long as we ate and we were healthy, that's all they, they counted. We'd, they couldn't afford to send us to school, they didn't have that kind of money. So they had all to do to survive. And uh, it, thank God that uh, my mother and father, we all got, uh, they, they reached to see us all get married and all settle up nice families, and that's it. My mother used to wash clothes wash. by hand with the uh, with the um, washboard, yeah. scrub them, and then we had no stoves, no no gas stove. We had a cold stove, which she used to heat up, put this big pot on top of it, boil with the clothes. Clorox, whatever you had, and put it in there and boil your clothes and let them come white. You could just imagine nine children with all these diapers and clothes and things like that. Our poor mothers worked. We didn't have the bathroom was in the hallways, you know, in those in those tenements. That's the way it was. We were lucky to have it in the hallway. Some tenements had them in the backyards. And you had to get the key and go down to the backyard. You can imagine. What were they, back houses? Remember you back said, no, houses, no, regular... Tenements in the back, describe those tenements no, in the no, back. No, 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 no. They were regular back houses built up. There were bathrooms there, you know. Yeah, what was the and, Italian uh, word for it? Remember the, the Italian word? That they... Back house. As far as this, uh, anybody that talks better about this neighborhood, no, you can't. forget it. Were the Chinese here when you first came here? Uh, the China, Chinatown was confined uh, on the other side of Canal Street. That was Chinatown. Strictly in, Chinatown. In fact, Marty, Chinatown, now, excuse me, Chinatown, people were afraid to walk through it. Years ago, they said so many stories water. about it. Can but it wasn't true. Go. It wasn't no, true. No, no, that was true. I had a tongue water. Yeah, I remember as a kid. It was true. You had, you had, you had the, the detectives, uh, uh, four, uh, two on each corner. In other words, it was dangerous. Not to, the, not, to the, not to us, to amongst themselves. Oh, amongst tongue. themselves. Well, naturally, uh, you always get now, people that feel. Now, still amongst themselves. You got them no. in the teeth. Still amongst them. <laughs> now, no. Something, the uh, same thing the Irish did when they... Right, did, uh, right. As everybody that they resented, resented us. You see, but... What do you mean, the, the Irish? Well, well the Irish people, the when the Irish Italian people came here, they resented it too, because they didn't want to be thrown out of their own neighborhood. You used to have an only barge out of here when, when, when my father came here. How many, sure. how many bars you had here? You had about, about six, seven bars over here. All yeah. Irish bars. And there was only one guy, there was only one Martin. guy that, that, that remained away till they threw the building out. <laughs> no. So they threw the, they threw the buildings down. And uh, uh, it's not like it was uh, years ago that the people used to leave their doors open and it was like all one big house, the whole, the whole apartment. Uh, you're going from hello, the doors are open and you go into one house and to another. Like me, I used to... If I don't like what my mother used to cook, I used to go downstairs to, uh, and eat. I had to go upstairs and say, what are you cooking, Mom? I don't like it. Downstairs. We used to be like all one family. It was different. It was uh, altogether different. It's really the... Yeah? I want to do the same. Sauce. I want to stir the sauce. You want what? Stir the sauce. What do you think he was saying about over there before, when you were talking before about the Irish? What was that? When he says there's a lot of bars, there were a lot of bars? Well, naturally, every corner had mostly bars, and you had a lot of stores and things, you know, but uh, from what I gather... But, but what, did, what did you, you were saying something, though, about him? What, what he said? You I don't want him to say that. Why not? Because. You don't want him to say what? 
about Irish people. I mean, after, you know, after all, we, we really did come in here and live here, you know what I mean? And then, of course, as it's just like everything else, you know, it was, they were here first, right, naturally. It's just like kids when they find something and they, uh, they, they find it and they have it and then somebody comes along and wants it and they say, no, I found it first, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I guess they resent it, you know. But then, as he says, it sort of started to get, you know, everybody got together and then they made well, one happy family. <laughs> that's all. Well, you know, it wasn't too bad after a while. They sort of got used to the idea. But in the beginning, it was a little tough. But it's just like everything else. Now my meatballs are in, I shall put my cover on and forget about it. That's it. Your father, what he was doing and where he came from, what the town was and all that. Well, my what father came from, from uh, Bolice in Sicily. And uh, through town in Sicily. And he, when he was a little, a little boy, about six or seven years old, his mother had died his father remarried and uh, somehow or another I don't know what happened but uh, he didn't want to stay there and some men took him in he had a farm he had goats and things like that mm -hmm. and we would work for, for this man as he grew up he we would work for this man at 19 years old he was coming to this country this man didn't want him to come over here this man wanted him to marry one of his daughters this man had three daughters no sons mm -hmm. and he says he would give him anything he wanted but my father says no I'm going to America so he came away he was about 19 years old and uh well, what year was that like around? well i would say 1901 something like that he started to work as a laborer when he was 21 years old he decided that he wanted to get married and he went to my mother and he and he, and he married her and he got married right here in, in the old saint patrick's uh, church the old cathedral uh -huh. during the world war one he wanted to work on ships yeah and when when they had him down the hull there that they were working on the ships way down uh, after the times they wouldn't even let them come up because they figured these people come up they would uh, they would go away because they wouldn't want to work under those conditions they kept them there for for a week or so just to give them food and everything else but they after a week or so so just to make them come up and go out and he finally wanted to work for the new york steam and as he worked for new york steam without an education had a hundred people working for him what was new york steam new york steam consists of con edison today they took it over i see con edison and what did he all, did go into business or anything I'd say about eight, nine, or ten businesses, all in fruit and vegetables. And every one of them he put up, he lost money on them. He always uh, didn't make out. But he kept trying, kept trying. And they comes up, he says, I bought the grocery store downstairs. We were all furious. We don't want him to get into business. And he got into business. And the New York Steam people came over to him. They wanted him back again. He wouldn't go back. He says, now I got my own business, and that's it. But my father was the type of a man. He wanted to be in business. He always told me. Anytime you're in business, you can owe all the money in the world, but you always got money in your pocket when mm -hmm. you're in business. And you can always support, you know, family, you got money. The bills you paid them as they came along. Finally, after so many years, he lost it too. And he lost it just at the time when the world, the uh, Second World War started. As far as my mother goes, well, uh, she was a, a strong woman. My father would never get into arguments with anybody. She would face them. My father would always... She would push my father always on the side. She was a very s s strong woman, even with the with, the, with us, with the, with the children. And she had to say something. She told you, and that was it. And you couldn't answer her. He was tough. When did she come over? And what, and what kind of what kind of uh, boat trip? I mean, you know. Oh, she had tell us a little about that. Bad. When she, when she came over. When she came over, she said she almost died on a trip there. That boats were were small, were very small. But they came. It took her a month and a, a month, over a month to get away by boat. Like our mother, the same thing. They came over here, the boats were, they were waves, they thought they'd never make it. And they came over here. Our mother then came over here years ago, but I don't remember her. Yeah. And she, she died, you know, you know, and all that. My, 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 but my mother was a, she was a real whip. I remember as a as a little boy, we used to have uh, in 241, we had two borders. We had, you know, what two, the room, two, two borders, borders. I mean, uh, people that lived with us. Yeah. Uh, in the kitchen. Where you see the kitchen? It used to be a bedroom. Yeah, but they used to pay? Oh, yeah. 
My mother used to cook for them, wash their clothes, and used to pay. Well, how many people were in the rooms? There was two boarders, me and my father. Uh, I was born as Rosie, Mo, me, Mikey, Mikey, and Joey and Faye. We were seven, and two was nine. How many rooms? Well, there's uh, the kitchen, four rooms over. That's all, four small rooms. There was no such thing as uh, 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 elaborate rooms. You know what there was? You had no furniture then. You had the beds. Bed and chairs. In the daytime, you pick them up and you had the room. And the nighttime, you fold them down and then you go to sleep. I don't know what I think it was. <laughs> I think it was. That's what and, uh, Table and chairs. And my place. mother, I remember my mother scrubbing them floors, wooden floors on her no knees. No carpet. No carpets, wooden floors with, the, with a brush, an iron brush in a hallway and in the house. Used to make those floors sparkle. Wouldn't force. Today they got so soft, they got a washing machine, they got this, they got that. Some <laughs> And there was, uh, and they never, they never, they never cried, uh, you know, that they would say they were tired. There was no such thing as being tired. And besides that, they used to say she used to sew pants. My father was always a scaffold maker. A scaffold. scaffold. The board yeah. that's outside of the, uh, the building when they that they stand building, on. They put the scaffolds that meant well, to go around, as it, you know. Put well, bricks and well he was always a scaffold, uh, scaffold right, scaffolding. So of course it was hard to get work here. So wherever they could work, get work, they would go out. Go out of town for months. And I remember months. him going to Springfield, New Jersey. And that Monday was like morning, for me to. <laughs> he would leave on a Monday morning. In Springfield, New Jersey, he would go there to go to work. Yeah, to go to yeah. work. Would go away Monday morning and come back Friday night. Yeah. For forty-five dollars a week. Now, now supporting nine money. children. That was big money. Now, so one night my father had handlebars. Mm -hmm. So one night, on a Friday night, there was a knock at the door. So we were children. We opened the door, and all of a sudden we ran back and we're pulling on to my mother. What's the matter? She said. I said, there's a man at the door. <laughs> it was my father. He shaved off his handlebars. Yeah, it is. And we were, we didn't recognize him, and we were crying. I'm trying to do the same thing. And you know, <laughs> it was, he used to get a big charge out of it. He loved to do that. He used to get a big charge out of things like that. <laughs> The years ago, they didn't have such things as uh, sellers used to take the bite his grape and squeeze the juice up in a, in a room there and put the, the, the barrels in a, one of the barrels in the part of the bar room and make the wine ferment. You mean they used to make wine where? In the, in the house. In the rooms with the borders and all. We used to make the wine, put two, three barrels, make it ferment, and, just ferment. and we used to get some wine out of it. Very good. And at, time, at times we used to... Uh, the smell of that wine used to get us at night time, you know, you know what wine is, when it smells, it starts to ferment. A lot of people used to do that. Because they used to make their own wine, it was cheaper to them, they couldn't go and buy right. wine or... At that time, they didn't have uh, gallons of wine like they got today from California or things like that. So they used to make their own wine. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was pretty good wine too, the only thing was that uh, 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 they didn't have the facilities of cleaning it up the way they should have. Yeah. Oh, my father made it too. But we were a little richer than you. We put out down the cellar. Yeah. What about when my father, or your father made the wine for my father? I don't want to say many barrels. Well, when he made the wine for my father, and then he, your father uh, he got Get paid. Dirty now. And then uh, he says to him, all right, pick one of your own barrels for yourself. The whole thing was great. <laughs> Every barrel. Everything was vinegar. Are you insinuating that my father not no, how to make wine? It wasn't that your father didn't know how to make wine. It was something with the grape. It was that kind different. of wet. But don't you want to insinuate your tooth? You broke it. What tooth? This? You're not supposed to talk. What? He's putting that in the tooth, which would do your tooth. Which tooth? Yeah, it's yeah, shorter. That. It's short. How come? Oh. Inside. side. That's right there. This one? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's short. You're going to get it fixed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that something he brings in the tooth? It looks up. like hell. It even looks like hell. That's it. It's that's not long enough. No, no, no. It's short. Not long enough. Much shorter than the others. Get it fixed. I think the beard did that. Yeah, yeah. It brings it out. But with the vinegar in itself, he with the vinegar itself, tell they got money because good vinegar was uh, they sold it as much vinegar. more profitable than, than wine. Mm -hmm. Good vinegar. Well, so you could just imagine what it looked like, you know, in the mm -hmm. kitchen, all this box of grapes, grapes piled up. Then, of course, he used to take, he used to pick it out, you know, take it, bring it downstairs. And he used to put it in this barrel that was sword in half, put on a pair of black boots, and start mashing it, running, you know, walking around in the grape. And then, of course, when it was 
mashed very, very good. He would take it out and put it in this... Um, in, the in Italian we say, no. to strain it real tight. Okay, mm -hmm. you're wrong. Now if he did it with his feet, if he did it with his feet, they didn't have to use the machine. Well, how you gonna get the, the juice only out? Time, how you gonna get the juice out? The only time they used, the only time they used their feet is when they didn't have the machine. We and that, no, I'm telling you. Now we got mixed up. No, I'm, that's the way it is. The only time they used it with their feet when they didn't have the machine to grind it. Well, how would you, I'm not talking about the grinding machine. I'm that's talking about the just, machine that squeezes it. That's the grinding machine. That's what strings do. Oh, now they have it. Don't tell me, because I made wine too. Oh. And but in Europe... Well, anyway, my father had good uh, wine. Well, my father was in Italy. He was in the... In, in, uh, no, my father was in the... Uh, start, start from uh, his mother and the whole thing. Start all that. Well, I can't see all that. Well, no, you say it was... Uh, well, he was from... Uh, his mother, he did... He, he didn't... He didn't know who his mother was. He had been, a, but he had been on his own, so he went in with, to live with some family. Yeah. And this, this, these people took him in. Of course, then he went away to be a. When he became of age, he went away to be a uh, soldier in the cavalry. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, he stayed there. And of yeah. course, I. In what, the, what what town was this and where? Uh, Bosina. In Sicily. In Sicily, Bosnia. In Sicily too. See, he was different nationality from us. Well, the towns, one, one the after town another. The town was one after the other. Uh, one after another, yeah. told me not. This day, they were coming through the town, through my mother's town. Of course, everybody comes out on the balcony to look at the soldiers going by. They're in uniform. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. He wore a uh, blue uniform with a hat with a big white plume on it, and he was on horseback. And, of course, my mother was on the balcony, and uh, when he passed through, he looked at her and she looked at him, and it was sort of love at first sight. So he brought out an instance that he said that the balcony was so low that if she just put her hand down, she could, That's he, the truth. She we could saw touch it. him. We saw it. Now, when we I went to it. Italy, I uh, asked my aunt to take me over to my mother's house where she lived. They brought me over to the house, and that was true. Mm -hmm. I took a picture of it, and the balcony was really that low that you could have touched him. See? You lost all the films. <laughs> well, anyway... You lost all the films? Sure. Sure. And I kind of somebody touched the camera. That was it. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> he got it heard. He's got to make everybody fit around with the camera. You know. I lost the Touch this and touch that. And I, I lost my mother's picture. I lost the But I'm going to take another one of it. Well, yeah, anyway, yeah. then, of course, they fell in love. So they caught it for about 22 days, and then they got married. Mm -hmm. So my sister was about six months old. And he kept calling her to come to America. But my mother didn't want to come. She was afraid of the boat. And every time he would call, if, come to America, there's, uh, it's nice over here. It'll be different living. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, he got so mad, he says to her in the next letter, if you don't come to America, I'm going to leave you. So she got on the next boat and came over. Yeah, but you said that... Uh, she didn't want to get on the boat. She didn't want to. Every time she got on the boat... She turned back. Our they brother, tricked her. They tricked her into getting him on the boat. That he was going to America with her. He says to her, I'm going to America too with you. So he put him on the boat, and as she turned around for a second, he just faded out of sight. Boat, that's it. Well, she remained, my, uh, my yeah, uncle. She became frantic. Naturally, it was too late. The boat had started out. But it took her about 30 days to come to Very America. Very bad trip. Very, Very bad, bad trip. And of course, they, were, they looked like peasants, you know. My little sister with the little kerchief on, and her, they really looked. Well, anyway, he came to, they came to America, and they went and lived, I think, on 3rd Street. Then they lived across the street. Mm -hmm. Then eventually, my aunt came. So naturally, there's no place to live. So you come and board with us. Mm -hmm. So they took my aunt in, my uncle, and her son. That's three plus So that's nine three kids. plus nine children, you figure it. Three plus nine children? Plus, right. uh, plus, plus my mother and father. Eleven. And three is 14. Well, that's so my mother, so my aunt occupied the bedroom. The kitchen was in the middle, and the my mother, father, and the children were in the living room. Three rooms, worse than us. Three rooms. And don't forget, uh, they used to have their babies at home too. No, don't think there was there no such thing as they a call the midwife, and the midwife, midwife would come in. That's so right. you were born here. The twins were born at home. Yeah. The twins are who? Me and my brother Charles. 
And of course, there was such a big row that time over the twins. Somebody <laughs> wanted the girl, the other one wanted the boy. What do you mean somebody wanted them? They want to take them. Because they were getting, they got excited. Two kids. So how are you going to feed all these kids? <laughs> well, so one woman says, don't get excited, I'll take the girl. What do you think this is? <laughs> what do you think this is? A, a bargain basement? I'll take the boy? What is this? Uh, you had it wrong. Thank you. Charlie, I was right. Yeah. What were you right about? My father just smashed the grape. Yeah, put his not, feet. But not with that. And then put in the thing. But no, they can't. You mash it once. Oh my God. Your father didn't have the machine my father had. Yeah, well, machines are right. <laughs> <laughs> <You're in> joke. <laughs> you don't know him, Marty. Well, what kind of work did it exactly do besides scaffolding? I mean, what, where did he work? What kind of things happened to him? I and mean, was it dangerous? My father? Was like, yeah. There was a lot of things, you know, another time he came home, he hurt his arm and he was out of work so long. And you know, when the master of the house was in work, it, it was hard on us. My mother used to sew pants to keep the family going. My mother was a, a very fine hand sewer. Uh, you can't remember, but the older people will remember when I mentioned his name. My mother made pants for Daddy Browning, a millionaire. He married the... Uh... He married... Peaches. A young girl, her name was Peaches. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is, I'm serious. And my mother was such a fine sewer that every, and he used to go here on Arnheim, on Arnheim on 9th Street to have his clothes made. And they used to give the pants to my mother because her sewing was beautiful. With so children. fine. Yeah, and my mother used to take the clothes, listen to me, take the, the pants, sew them, and she used to teach us how to sew. We had to sit by her and do the seams up to, and the children, uh, who was running around, who was wet, who was hungry, who we had to give a bottle to. That's how we were raised. My mother used to finish the pants, fold them all up nicely, make a bundle, and carry them back to 9th Street. They would give her another batch, and she'd come back. You had to bring them and deliver them. Homework. It was homework. homework. Nobody would come to the house the and pick them up. I mother do the same thing. And actually, we had a... She taught us. She taught us how to sew. She taught us how to knit, how to crochet, how to embroider, everything. We did everything. We watched her and we learned. Mm -hmm. But it was tough. And she had to help out too. So uh, my mother, my sister lived with, my mother rather lived with her mother. Mm -hmm. in, wait a minute, in the hallway. Be careful. Who's in the hallway? What's happening? Come up and down. I forget. Somebody's going up and down. Just be no. careful. <laughs> No, you never know. So yeah. my mother used to, my mother used to live with her mother, you know, after, or wherever it was. She lived in somebody's house anyway. So she said that this, talking about things that used to happen in Italy, it was strange things. They, you know, they used to tell us these stories. If you want to believe it, you believe it. But you know, in the way it was, I'm sure my mother wouldn't lie to us. She said that uh, this night she was sleeping and the baby woke up. And of course, the woman used to nurse the children. There was no such thing with a bottle. So she got up and started to nurse this child. As she nursed this child, she's sitting up in the bed. Now at the foot of the bed, she saw this armor, this man appear to her. He was all in silver. And he says to her in Italian, I'll say it in English, if you hit me with something, I'll make you rich. So she got scared. So she took the little baby and pressed it closer to her chest. So the man repeated it. If you hit me, if you hit me with something, I will make you rich. So with that, she got scared and he disappeared. Now they claim that after they sold the house, these people started to dig. They were fixing the house. And they dug and dug and dug. And you'd be surprised, they found all these silver coins under the ground. Now, I'm sure my mother wasn't lying. These were stories that she said. And this happened when, when uh, she was alone then? She was alone then. And where was, where was her father? My father was in America at the time. Mm -hmm. So then I guess... Well, you see, let me put it this way. Years ago, they all were great storytellers because, you, as I said before, you had no television already or nothing. <laughs> you used to get, actually, people, they used to come to the house and tell stories to kids and everybody and say stories for, for hours and hours. Real stories that you don't know whether to, you had to believe them or not. But they say stories that, uh, and they were very interesting. They used to keep you on your toe. 
either to keep us quiet or what it was. But no, you'd be surprised. Some fantastic really story. Really story. Fantastic yeah. story. Some fantastic story. Well, did she story. tell her husband that story? And what did she do? He wanted to Oh, no, then she <laughs> told... No, wait a minute, that's right. Then she told... When she... Uh, in the morning, she told the people she was living with, but I don't know if it was her mother. So the man says to her, you stupid thing, you. He says, you could have hit him with the baby's diaper, anything you had in your hand. He says, you would have became rich. <laughs> then who knows? <laughs> who knows? You know. You know. Who knows? So one time... We had, you know, as we got older, we got more not civilized, you know. The children got older, you got boyfriends, you brought them up the house. You wanted the apartment to look nice. So we painted the apartment, and he had this great big picture of him hanging on the wall in uniform, which was beautiful, and it was about, oh, this big, real, a big picture. Mm -hmm. So when we painted, we figured, you know, the boyfriends come up, you don't want those things hanging around up there anymore. You know, you want to better yourself. So we didn't put the picture up. Well, anyway, he didn't notice it. I guess for some reason, I, I imagine he figured the house was just painted. They didn't get a chance to put it up yet. Well, one day, a, a neighbor of ours came up. And she says, well, my father's name was Martin. But a lot of people called him Philip. <laughs> I don't know why. Don't ask me why. But uh, they called him Filippo. Mr. Philippo. I don't understand. No, I don't know why either. Wait, don't wait. ask me why. I have a brother. His name is Salvatore. They call him Charlie. <laughs> That's, That's, That's my, name. my twin. My name. His Luciano. name is Luciano. They call him Charlie. Why? Anyway. My name was Catherine. They called me Kelly. I don't know why. Anyway, what, what happened? Well, so anyway. Came in? So this woman came in and she started to, she started to tease him. And she says, Mr. Filippo, I don't see your picture hanging up anymore. Well, that's all he had to hear. He figured now for sure, I don't see my picture up anymore. Well, he turned to my mother, there was an awful row in the house that night. That woman was very embarrassed. She said, if I knew you were going to take it up like that, I would have never mentioned it. He says to my mother, I want that picture tonight because I'm going to break it. So she says, uh, uh, well, you know, they kind of they started to make excuses, but he was fit to be tied. He was furious, and that woman felt very, very bad. Till this day... May he rest in peace. We never gave him that picture. And my uh, brother has it. Another That's thing. A beautiful picture. And you didn't give it to him. No. How do you think we made the other picture? Uh, oh, because he would have broken it. And then, and this he is. He would have broken it to bits. And this is funny. After the man dies, they had the picture made, and everybody got one piece. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, no, don't say that. Come on, no, that's the truth. No, Charlie, don't say that. The picture, the big picture, remained the way it was. My brother has it. But the small pictures, we all bought one each because it is a. You had one. It is a beautiful yeah, picture yeah. of him. Yeah, I got it. It really is beautiful. But how long was it before he became a citizen, though? I mean, this one want to get some idea. Idea of what these people well, are doing. Well, I don't doing. know. My sister Mary knows that, see. Well, anyway, you, you tell her that what happened with the immigration thing. Well, when he went to, you know, they, he wanted to be a citizen, he had to take my sister along with her because she had to be the interpreter. Right. So, so she, no, he couldn't speak English. He says a few words, but not in sentences, yeah. you know. So, of course, she went up to the girl there and she says to him, you want to become a citizen? So, of course, he didn't understand her. So, she says, you got an interpreter. So, he called my sister. Come in. So she says to my sister Mary, she says, um, your father doesn't understand or speak English. She says, no. She says, how long is he in this, in America? She says, uh, oh, 30 years. She says, why, wow, that's terrible. She says, and he can't speak a word of English? She says, I think that's terrible. So he says to her. No, he said, he said to Mary, he said to Mary. What so Mary, say? so he says to Mary, what did she say? So my sister Mary says, you know, she says that it's Vergonia that, uh, Zandane in Ashton America, Mango Sabalare Miragana. He says, Oh, yeah, he says, Go. He told us something in English? So he told us something in English, a dirty word. <laughs> Go in yourself. So she says, Oh, that's terrible. She says, Get him out of here. So he never became a citizen? Oh, he was a citizen. Yes, he became a citizen. Well, how many times do you have to go to it? Well, I don't know if they have to renew it then, you know? Oh, God. But that was funny. He says, I'll show you if I know how to talk English, he told her. <laughs> he knew the right word. <laughs> that word they always learned. When did you move to when did he move to Staten Island? Oh, my father moved to, to Staten two. Island. We were kids. Wait a minute. They bought the lots. My they brother, I think Andrew was about two years old. They bought lots. What did they, we what bought they the buy? lots. They, well, we, no, we didn't have anything. So this man came and he was a friend of my father's. He says, you know, he says, I have a lot of lots out in Staten Island. I'll give them to you real cheap. You don't have to pay me all at once. Whenever you have the money, you pay me. So he gave him one lot for $200. That was something. 
So of course there was a little bungalow on it. But really, we couldn't afford it. But just for the... For the like cooking his own meal? Yeah. Oh, he loved that. He had to have certain gravy. Yeah. Certain tomato paste. My mother had to make it in the summer. Mm. Preserve it. Mm. Because he wouldn't want to eat this. He wanted his own. And he would make it and it would come out so dark because it was really dry, you know. Mm -hmm. And he loved it. And then what would happen? He would make the macaroni and he'd call everybody in to eat. Come and taste it. Come and taste it. How are we going to eat if we taste yours, Pop? You had to taste it. You had to taste them. He used to <laughs> save them for us. Save them. That was the truth, boy. That was uh, amazing. Uh, and now, now that he's gone, they, they destroyed right. everything. They just made a plain grass and trees, that's all. Where? In Staten Island. Well, there's nobody to take nobody care of it. Nobody to take care of it. There's only my... Uh, there's only his, uh, my sister or that, you know, his uh, sister. Yeah. And she... Nobody could take care of it. So they, she had it all cleaned up and it cost her money to clean it up, too. Mm. That's some beautiful stuff there. It's all gone. I was going to show you, when they build it up, when they, the father or mother builds it up, and then nobody else wants to take care of it. Yeah. Uh, Okay, that's good. that's good. I remember one time we had a fig tree. He used to love fig trees, and my mother couldn't stand them. Yeah. In the winter time, you had to cover them very, very well. Otherwise, they froze. One winter, when he did climb up, he was getting old. He fell oh. off the ladder, yeah. and he got hurt. And my mother was so angry. She says to him, "I hope those fig trees die. I hope they never bloom again." She says, and then, of course, uh, my mother became ill, and. Uh, the next winter she passed away and trees never bloomed anymore. It was just like she took, she took them with her and that was that. Now that's enough for today, Marty. Okay, that's it. Uh, that's good. That's I, hope my sisters don't get, I hope my sisters don't get after me because I have five sisters and they're going to kill me. Katie, they're going to say? Oh. Well, is that all for today? Now listen, could I put my furniture back? What furniture? You know, things in here. Could I set up? These things are going to be upset tomorrow again? Yeah. No, I mean, I can't stay this way. I have to vacuum the rug, wash my dishes. Right? Huh? When you leave, not now. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're thinking of Papa, Grandpa? Yeah. Oh, but the way he told And he says, you know, he stands there with his hands behind his back and he says, Go, and he goes, but, you know, he, he emphasized it. <gasps> My sister Mary says, I will never take him out with me anymore. He embarrassed me. Did you visit at the, uh, at the, uh, uh, in the office? office. He says it's the uniform, but I don't remember. Well, of course, you always had to be, had taken an interpreter because he didn't speak English. So Mary says, as far as me, I'm not taking him any place anymore. And that's a shame, make me say things like that. Is he still taking this? No. <laughs> I'm ready, you won't get out of this house alive. <laughs>